Whoa, we are back for the 18th episode of Home at Advantage. I am Sam Herring, joined today by Jude Swisher for a special episode of HMA. This time we're just going to do a short recap uh, of the world championships that's going on right now in Kazakhstan. And uh, this is the first video episode we've done yet, and uh, we're excited to get going with this. Sam, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm ready to... I'm ready to uh, recap worlds, and uh, and hopefully get some sadness out today. Yeah, we need to talk about our feelings, because um, truthfully, I'm very hurt. I think our Greco, if we want to, if we want to roll right into it, I think Greco really hurt hurt me deep down inside. Um, our women, for the most part, um, performed really well. You know, with with we got th- three world championships in a uh, in a fifth placer, but um, men's freestyle so far is is not looking super well. Um, I want to remind our listeners to um, two wrestlers dressing for medals. Oh well, okay. It's not bad. It's it could be. It's better. going pretty bad. It's it's. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to remind our listeners to follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, our Instagram is at HMA underscore podcast. Our Twitter is at HMA underscore podcast. Uh, you can send us emails. Wait, wait, wait. Pretty sure it's HMA wrestling right now. I didn't know that. Um, so our 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 Twitter is HMA wrestling. And so is everything's at HMA wrestling. Um, we're, hopefully we're going to continue to keep up a stream of content flowing on it. Uh, and showing off our our photos, um, and Tony Rotunda's photos. Hey, Sam, did you know who sponsors Home at Advantage? Uh, you know, I might have, but I, I think I forgot. Who is it? I'll remind you. <laughs> it's Tony Rotunda with WrestlersOfWarriors.com. Sam, did you know he takes the best photos in wrestling today? Just the absolute oh, best. Oh, I did know that. Did you know that he's in Kazakhstan just, right now? He's taking photos of of all the Team USA wrestlers wrestling right now, and they're going. He's selling them on wrestlersorwarriors.com. Did you know that? I'm pretty sure I did. Oh well, he knew it, guys. But now you know it too. Go support our friends. All right, <laughs> they had to do the plugs. Sam, let's. Oh, I hit the mic. Sam, let's uh, let's hop right into the. To what's going on? So recap, recap the Greco for us. Well, um, going into the World Championship for Greco, we knew we had a we had the capability to have a pretty good year. Uh, Kuhn was was looking really good, returning world silver medalist. We had um, Pat Smith who beat junior world champion Kamal Bay, and we really uh, thought he could do well. Max Nowry had some great talent, some some success at Pan Ams. Um, and so, so we knew we had talent, and we knew we had a chance for some medalists, but um, it just it didn't go our way at for uh, for Greco, and uh, we we really struggled. We did, we walked out of there with no medals, mm-hmm. and uh, not too much momentum for women's. Yeah, and we didn't um, you know didn't qualify any of the the Olympic spots, um, and it was. I, I'm did, pretty sure. Oh, Max. Pretty Nowry, sure Max right? Nowry qualified. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we qualified Nowry, but still, like we, the Greco team going into it, there was a um, we we I felt like there was uh, you know, obviously they talked they talked about on FRL how they there isn't enough um like awareness of Greco, and and so and now everyone's like oh why aren't we doing good, um well maybe truthfully just we had higher expectations for our Greco team, but, um, you know, I have faith that we're, that our, our team USA coaches will know the best like steps to go from here. And, and hopefully we can bounce back next year. Um, definitely, you know, I, it was asked to us on Instagram. It was asked to us, I believe by Dyson Gould. And he, he said like, Oh, should, what should, what style should we train? And, um, and I said that, you know, if we need to get, if we want to get Greco medals, that we need to have 
more focus from the youth age, like, like from youth going up into Greco. Um, Cause that's what all the foreign guys do is that, you know, they, they are training Greco their entire life up until the world championships. And if we're not doing that, then um, it's going to be really tough to compete against guys who've been doing it their whole lives. Um, well, I, I, I talked about this on HMA interview number nine with Mike Mao. Um, and I just feel like we're never going to be a top power in Greco because the domestic style is folk style. That mm-hmm. is a leg grabbing style where we grind and, and it's not much of throwing and, and Greco type wrestling. Um, right. Now, if we wrestle freestyle as our main sport, we'd definitely be better at Greco. And if Greco is our main sport, we'd obviously be better at Greco. Yeah. We can definitely improve and give better opportunities to guys with RTC options and coaching. And from a younger age, you have options with coaching um, in Greco. But I don't think we're ever going to make it to a top power. Yeah, not unless there's a there's a big change in uh, a big focus shift onto Greco. Um, I don't I don't know if we can can do it. And so an interesting take to, that was brought to me by my, my, my boy, Danny. Um, and it was about, it was about freestyle folk style. And I was of the opinion that like folk style gives our freestyle wrestlers a, a, a different edge and a different feel in our, against foreign opponents. Um, it helps us with our pace and grinding out really tough matches. And he said, like, I don't know how to put it, but he said, like, if we're, tr- if we went full freestyle and full Greco, we would be best in the world because we have a huge, like, um, our, the amount of wrestlers in our country, there's a huge amount of wrestlers in the country because there's a huge, a huge amount of people in our country. So, you know, we can't expect to train softball and it's not quite the exact same um which it's an interesting take i don't know how i feel about it uh, but it's definitely something i've been thinking about um you know that analogy of freestyle and folk style as as similar as they are they are different um and from youth that you we train folk style that's what we do so what do you think sam Right. Well, I, I definitely agree um, that training freestyle full time would make us would make us better. Uh, something Mike Mouse said was America has the best athletes in the world. Mm-hmm. Undisputed. Uh, um, and, and that's just, like you said, we have the be- we have the most amount of people. Uh, we have the best opportunities, the best economy that that helps grow young athletes uh, and coaches. Um, and so I feel like. We have the best opportunity, but that's not something that, as a whole, our country dedicates our time and effort into is freestyle wrestling. Right. And that's that's just gonna hurt. Yeah, in that level. At that level, you know, our what America does is that we really, um, we really appreciate the value of folk style wrestling and, and the amount of like, like wrestling aside like character development that comes from folk style wrestling and like coming up as a folk style wrestler um it makes you tough it makes you a tough human being and americans who you know (laughs) history lesson we came off and we had to start a country by ourselves um you know that's tough Uh, american history has always been tough and gritty and we've always idealized like we've emphasized being tough and and valued being gritty in our in our society so um folk style wrestling really reflects that in the american spirit or whatever you want to call it um but that's really that's just my two cents about the whole situation uh yeah, no that makes a lot of sense i totally understand that mm-hmm. you want to you want to move on to women we can we can talk about women or how about this? Definitely. How about this? Let's talk about men's freestyle, and then we can end on a good note and talk about the women. <laughs> okay. That sounded really bad, but all right. Um, so, 
I'm really sad about Zane Rutherford. He lost the... Of course you are. Man, after all that time of, you know... It was just... And it was over in one match. It was it was very depressing. You know what? Something mm-hmm. even that makes... I, I know that a lot of fans are sad is that both Musakayev and Bajarang both took bronze. And both of them lost to Yanni. You know, I, I know a lot of people are thinking like, man, if Yanni wins, like, we would have a medal because Yanni beat both Musakayev and Bajarang. Um... What do you think about that, Sam? Do you, do you think Yanni would have meddled if he came to Kazakhstan? Um, of course. And I thought Zane would meddle coming into Kazakhstan. And um, the fact that Zane drops a tough one to Odaguru doesn't change my perspective on uh, not Odaguru, uh, Ortega um, doesn't change yeah. my perspective on on Yanni and his skill level and and his capabilities. Um. But that doesn't mean that I think our our system is flawed or the way that Zane was chosen was messed up in any way. Zane won that fair and square after having some real adversities in the in the process. So um, just feel like Zane earned his way there. And the biggest problem that I see with Zane is, is his savvy with international wrestling. Um, I feel like he spent so much of this summer training for Yanni and training for the U.S. Open World Team Trials Final X, um, the Dogu. He never really had time because he was never the set world team member to really focus on how to wrestle um, international competition well. Um, and we've seen him we've seen him fail at international competitions for one Worlds in 2017, and then the uh, Yarge year. in this year. Yeah, Yarge Yarge. in this year. Uh, Dan Kolov, he got bronze. Lost to Rashidov, who's the world champ right now. Mm. Um, and then he he lost to um, Yanni at the Dogu. Couldn't make Pan Ams. He's never won an international tournament. Yeah. So, Sam, do you think it's the... Um, do you think the arbitration process and that all hurt Zane going into Worlds, do you think the the extended period of of just, like, not knowing what's happening, do you think that hurt Zane's mentality or his training, or what do you, how do you think it affected him? So, definitely didn't hurt his mentality for Worlds. I think it hurt his preparation for Worlds, um, and I think it hurt his uh, opportunity for preparation for Worlds with the world team camps and everything. He really couldn't focus on himself. Like, the coaches couldn't totally dedicate themselves to Zane and give him everything they had so that he could go win a world medal. Um, yeah. And I definitely think that the arbitration drawn-out process hurt Zane. I don't, I don't think it was mentality at all. And I think it was the right thing to do. I wish it had gotten dealt with sooner, but... It was what had to happen. Yeah, what I mean, truthfully, we want to make it a fair process. And um, it, it sucks that it had to go be so extended and such, you know, a dramatic turn of events. Um, but we, you know, we want to be fair to Yanni. You know, we want to make sure Yanni has his best shot to make the Worlds. And, you know, it. We we gave him plenty of chances, but um, Zane was able to 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 take it in the end. So um, it's a disappointing thing to be sure, but uh, we know that um, the like now we know what to do in this situation. We you know I don't I don't know how Yanni would have performed if he came to Kazakhstan, but um, I I. I can say that Zane c- competed to the best of his ability, um, and he left it out all, all on the mat. And um, and hopefully this rivalry will continue next year, and, you know, hopefully it'll be a good problem to have, that we have just have two amazing wrestlers fighting for a spot. So, you know, Sam, it says here in the dock that Dayton Fix got ripped off. Do you want to talk about that? <sighs> yeah. Um, 
So both our guys for that day, when the draws came out, I was I was freaked out. I was like, man, this is going to be a tough term if we all get draws like that. If if we're because um, Zane Rutherford had Ortega round one, and then who did he have? The Iranian round two. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm assuming he wins, and then he would have had Rashida and Oda Guru and then Bajrang. That's pretty intense right there. Um, and then Dayton had a world champ round two. He didn't have Ortega round just, one. I, I was scared. Zane had a uh, Toby Air round one. Excuse Holy me. moly. Who am I? Who is Ortega? Isn't Ortega uh, 57? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm getting uh, Cuban and at Dayton. You get them all mixed, mixed up, up in your head. Cuban. I think... Yeah. The, the Cubans, the Cubans mix me up. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Um, yeah, right. I don't know where. To- or- now I have to find out where Ortega's from. You keep talking. I'm paying attention. I promise. I'm pretty sure Ortega's from Cuba at 57, because uh, Dayton had to beat him at Pan Am's, and it, we all went crazy because he beat Gilman a while back. Uh, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. Anyway. Um, so Dayton had Takahashi round two, the guy that beat Gilman in the 2017 World Finals, and then yeah, beat him. Where was it? The World Cup the next year. Um, Japanese, just, really, this, really this, good. Yeah, he's a he's a beast. He's super slick. His counter offense is unbelievable. Um, and I, I I thought that Dayton could win. Dayton's looking great all summer. Uh, he dominated. Uh, I'm not going to say dominated. He won Pan Ams with uh, real tough weight, Ortega in the bracket. Um, and he went through the gauntlet um, this summer with U.S. Open World Team Trials and Final X. With a, well, he didn't go to the World Team Trials, but um, he really battled with Thomas Gilman and having to beat him three times mm-hmm. over the summer. Uh, I just feel like he proved himself this summer, and I felt like he could beat Takahashi, and, and he really could. Uh, he scored the only takedown in the match, and this was how uh, Takahashi scored his points. He got, got passivity, shot clock point, shot clock point. So he got, got two of those, and he got a step out, and then a lot of challenge for that step out that really didn't happen. Uh, you can go back and watch the video. As many times as you want, I'm going to have to see a screenshot where Dayton his whole foot is outside of that orange line, orange circle, and, um, and then I might believe it, but I've seen too many videos and screenshots, and I watched the match, and, and it's just, he did not step out of bounds, and I don't know how, after reviewing it and going back and looking at the tape, that they couldn't overturn that, that call. It's a shame you see, hate to see it happen. Um, now, what is there any steps that we can... Is there anything that can be done for for Dayton Fix getting gypped? We just got to suck it up and, you know, it's tough, but that's the way it is. When in Tokyo, that's what we have to do. <laughs> yeah, I say, we, uh, I say we take the whole thing next Over year. Over Takahashi. That would be cool because Takahashi uh, from Japan. Yeah. I think it'd probably be better to uh, go be Takahashi round one and then – Lose the next match, so he gets eliminated. <laughs> no, no. Just lose the next match, so he gets eliminated. Um. So, and then let's see. Let's let's Which, by, recap. By way, that might have happened on purpose. For <laughs> so let's see. What what else happened? Uh James Green. Uh, got a a tech and then lost a real uh real heartbreaker. Uh, Nick Wazdowski, did he go one and one or zero and one? Zero and one, I believe. Zero and one, really disappointing, especially because he had a pretty good. I think I remember he had a pretty good seating in the bracket. He would have had to wrestle. He oh, was yeah. fourth, and he would have had to wrestle Petridishvili in the semis. He had he had a pretty good um, setup. I liked his. Yeah. It's, but um. Wasn't able to to pull it off, uh, and then Jordan Ernest Burroughs, um, the man, dropped a super tight one to 
Vasidikov. Oh. So this is <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking like this is probably really depressing to watch. I, this is really sad. Um the this recap video. But he was you know, he was was winning with like what how much time? 30 seconds left. Ended up giving up a, a step out. Um, did they challenge the step out and then it was four three or no, they didn't forth. challenge it. it. It was it was a um it was definitely a step out. It, it was just yeah. bad. it was one point four seconds to go. It was very disappointing. Um but I mean things are looking better because who did he beat for in the or he dropped right down for bronze medal match. And who's he gonna wrestle, Sam? Um Man, I don't know. I I haven't looking at the bracket, but I can I can pull it up here real quick. Um, oh, I bet I can pull it up faster. All right, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, seventy four. Consolation. Burrows against. Whoa, it's it hasn't been wrestled to yet. So who is so, he? Who will he have? It'll either be Hernandez. Uh, right, Vicky or uh, Okui. I don't know these names. Here, um, I think it's Japanese dude. Um, Burroughs is dropped down. So man, where where are the other guys in this bracket? There are so many other guys in this weight. It's it's a massive bracket. There's a lot of people in it. Um, yeah, but I've never heard of these guys that he's gonna be wrestling for bronze. Yeah, me neither. In the twenty and the nineteenth seed, which they don't they don't seed past four, but still. Yeah. Where's uh the Turkish guy? And where is Abdulakamanov so, and Gaziev and it'll be a it'll be a, a Mexican, a Polish dude, or the Japanese guy. That's who he's gonna wrestle. Um That's odd. That's on. It, it, yeah, Sitakov's road was not. There was not a lot of guys on his side. No. Um, no. So he had a pretty pretty well, on easy his road side, to the. He had a pretty easy road. Or to in the, his quarter. Yeah, in his yeah. quarter, but his side was stacked. Basically, I'm saying yeah. that Burroughs had so many tough guys. I mean, uh, for, to get past. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, um, but looking up. Jaden Cox is killing it. He hasn't been taken down. Yeah. Um, did you see that video that Flow Wrestling posted of like, or it might have been track. I don't remember who, but it was the, like, the Georgian, I believe, was like so close when, to taking oh, yeah. him down. And he like broke the matrix to not get taken down, dude. That was, oh, yeah. That's got to be so disheartening. That really breaks a dude. If you like wrestle your hardest and you're still unable to get a single pull. Two points, like, so tough, so tough. Um, but, you know, I feel really good about our shots um, tomorrow about uh, getting getting a, uh, a gold medal. Definitely. How long will Jaden Cox's reign last? We'll see next year how he, how he fits in at 86, which is basically where where he's going. Nobody nobody disputes that. Um We'll see if he can beat DT, and and, and then as that, I'm sure he's got Yazdani and Erden and those kind of guys. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think he beats the world. He just has to get, get by Daringer and... and Zahid and, and, and Mark. And, and Mark, and, well, I think Mark's going to go 74, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, and then Daringer, oh. obviously David Taylor. I mean, that's going to be tough. It's going to be... 86 is going to be really exciting next year. It's going to be, like, as tough as, like, 133 was last year. So, it's a deep, yeah, yeah, yeah. deep weight. Um, and then, uh, so, tomorrow we have Tyler Graff and uh, Pat. I think so, oh, is not Graff? Is Graff wrestling tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. So Every, everybody five? is left, so there's four. Four. 
Graf, Graf Pat, Dake, Snyder, Downey. So I'm confident in Dake. I think that um, Snyder can definitely he'll make the finals for sure. I'm picking him to win against Sajulayev. I think that mm-hmm. Tyler Graf can really blow it open. I think he's going to get a lot of guys. And I really like Patrick Downey's shot. Um, he has a decent – they both have decent draws. And uh, I'm really excited to watch all this wrestling. It's got to be – it's got to be a fun last day. When are the uh, – whatchamacallits? When are the finals going to be wrestled? Well, we've got some finals tomorrow for, for uh, Burroughs and Cox. And then the final finals will be Sunday. Mm-hmm. Okay. A. That's awesome. A. M. Eastern, I believe. Eight A. M. Eastern. Man, last last time they were wrestled at like three p.m. and we got to watch David Taylor win a world gold at M two during Sunday practice. It was really cool. It was really really. I cool. remember. I remember when uh, Sajulai beat Snyder. I got so mad. I went for a run for a while though. <laughs> To, to harness my to, anger. <laughs> to cool off, to, yeah. <laughs> to to train harder. Um. Okay. So, tough, tough what? couple days for Team USA. Oh, our women. We got to. Women, yeah. We got to talk about that. Um, This guy, is basically just happies and sads, and we'll just kind of stick to the happies uh, for right now. We'll just hustle through this. Uh, Jakar Winchester. Woo! first champ for USA and really pulled through. She's never really been able to to break through that barrier and, and, and this time she was and and she made it was so cool watching that because it was um an a call that was being like the whole match decided on whether the um challenge was successful or not. And then as soon as the ref gave the points, yeah Jakar got up and she's like jumping up and so down. Cool. Yeah. So that much was emotion. So cool she looked really awesome. The uh, women's wrestling have so much more emotion. Yeah. I mean, Tamara was falling after she won her gold. Tamara is, like, she's awesome. I remember like at our interview at Final X, like she just had so much energy. And she was excited. She called you Pastor Sam. <laughs> you yep, looked like a little pastor. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And then Adeline Gray makes history. Made history. Yeah. Five world gold medals, and that's more than. John Smith and Jordan Burroughs. That's yeah. She yeah, yeah yeah. I'm gonna go on a limb here, Sam. She's she's a really good wrestler. I'll say I'll say it here. Um, and then Forrest, uh, she dropped a tough one, and you know, it yeah. really really sucks, especially because she was talking sure about how this was the same result she got last year. She ended up dropping, um the bronze medal and and took fifth last year. So, um, but she's made a lot of growths in one year and the Hawkeye wrestling club is really going to help her to, um, to keep growing and progressing. And I, I have a lot of faith that force will come back next year and she's going to stand on top of that podium. I'm calling it right now. She is going to win. She's going to win the whole thing. Well, she's got Tim Rye to get by in the Olympic, uh, She's going up for the Olympic weights, and, and she's going to have to get by Tim Rice, so that's going to be tough. You know, there isn't uh, – not losses will affect you more deeply than wins, and especially Definitely. the same kind of loss two years in a row. Um, I think that if there's changes needed to be made in in her preparation and in her wrestling and in her mentality and whatever it is, I think Forrest is going to make it, and I think she's going to be optimized 100% for next year. Yep. Well, I think that about does it for this show. I hope I hope you all enjoy it, and uh, and hopefully we'll have more of these rolling these short video podcasts uh, recapping worlds. Hopefully after the after it all finishes on Sunday, we might be able to get one out. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but, but until then, guys, uh, be watching the world championships. Yo, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Tony Rotundo. Thank you, Sam. And uh, that was really really fun. Let's do this again sometime. Okay. All right. See you guys. Bye.